Namaskar, hello and welcome viewers. You're watching Committee Report with your host Kriti Mishra. Today we'll take a closer look at the report of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Defence on Demands for Grants of the Ministry of Defence for the year 2022-23 on procurement policy. The policy for procurement of defence equipment for the armed forces aims to ensure timely procurement of military equipment, systems and platforms as required by the armed forces in terms of performance capabilities and quality standards through optimum utilization of allocated budgetary resources. The policy also seeks to ensure that the highest degree of probity, public accountability, transparency, fair competition and level playing field are achieved in the process of procurement. Before the detailed analysis, let's take a look at the highlights of the report. The Standing Committee on Defence presented the 28th report on demands for grants of the Ministry of Defence for the year 2022-23 on capital outlay on defence services, procurement policy, defence planning and married accommodation project. The Ministry apprised the committee that defence capital acquisition is carried out in accordance with the defence procurement procedure, defence acquisition procedure and undertaken through 10 years integrated capability development plan five years defence capability acquisition plan and annual acquisition plan. The Ministry also said that the acquisition procedure of 2020 focuses on simplifying the defence acquisition procedure. The Ministry also said in order to promote probity, public accountability and transparency in defence, capital procurements and various steps have been taken by the government. And for deeper insights, I'm joined by an illustrious panel. Joining us in the studio, Kuwar Danish Ali, MP Lok Sabha from the BSP. He is also the member of the Defence Committee. Lieutenant General Sanjay Kulkarni retired. He is a renowned defence expert. And joining us through virtual platform, Mr. Mukesh Bhargav, Chairman, Defence Innovators Industry Association. I welcome all of you on Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. And Mr. Ali, let me begin the programme with you. You are part of the Defence Committee. The Ministry briefed you about several developments ensuring level playing fields, ensuring that there's transparency. What were the big takeaways for you? No, uh, defense committee, standing committee on defense always asked the ministry that the needs of the, our armed forces must be the priority. The only problem is, like uh, I'll give you an example. In last four years, uh, we, our government had uh, around 87 uh, agree procurement agreements with various countries U.S., Russia, Israel, France and others of worth of more than 1,18,000 crores. But uh, somewhere there is always a delay in program because the process is so lengthy. Now the Make in India initiative is also there. Like um, uh, uh, I was told that in uh, last, uh, last, uh, last year about, uh, uh, I think, 84,000 crores uh, worth of uh, uh, production was made by Ordnance Board Factory or Defence PSUs. And about uh, 12,000 MSMEs were involved in that. So, ultimately, it is creating the jobs also. But uh, my takeaway is that uh, we have to do a lot on it. And uh, ultimately, uh, the thing is that the budget allocation which is being done, we, the general people know oh, 2 lakh crores have been allocated for our defence uh, forces. But from that, how much is for purchasing the weapons and the artilleries? Most of that or part of that budget, maximum, will go for the salaries pensions and uh, other day-to-day uh, -day this thing. And if we goes on record, there is very few uh, this thing which has been purchased. Uh, ultimately, we have to balance the things. Lekin ab wakt a raha hai, jab hum apne desh mein bhi nirman bhoat sari cheezo ka कर सकते हैं जो नहीं हुआ है होना चाहिए लेकिन उसके साथ साथ विद अ क्वेश्चन दैट द 
assets which our armed forces are having since the British era, they must not be sold away or given to our crony capitalist friends with the throwaway prices. Like um, even in military uh, engineering services, ka jo military workshops, hai, मतलब वो ब्रिटिश टाइम से इतने बड़े एसेट्स से इतने बड़े लैंड्स हैं अब आप उसको प्राइवेटाइजेशन के नाम पर आप उसको अगर पूरा का पूरा ऐसे ही हैंडओवर कर दोगे तो वो ठीक नहीं है देर आर थिंग्स विच कैन भी जरूर प्राइवेटाइज भी होना है इंस्टीट्यूशन पैसा भी उसमें बाहर से आना है लेकिन विद अ कॉशन दैट द होल्ड शुड बी on their those assets should be permanently with the armed forces all right sir but a very valid point that you made about atmanirbhar bharat general kulkarni let me take that to you again the ministry briefed the committee about several initiatives specifically the make initiative saying that the government is also providing funding so what are the key drivers for atmanirbhar bharat in defense and it was nice to hear was the mr danishali member of parliament being a very effective member of the defense committee and he brought out a lot of things See, the focus always remains on atmanirbha reason is until unless you are self reliant in terms of security is concerned you would find it extremely difficult for modernization of the armed forces even though the defense procurement policy which was first initiated around 2002 now 2016 and now 2020 various amendments that come is a huge voluminous report of almost 657 pages which leads primarily to streamline the procurement why the streamlining of procurement is something which we really need to ensure that whatever is what is transparent whatever is what is what is required by the armed forces whatever is what is bang for the buck until unless we ensure all of it we will find ourselves wanting now the armed forces have a gsqr until unless that complete qualitative requirement of the require is there and met you, the procurement become very difficult and like we at least brought out that there are times when you find allegations coming and you have an l1 and somebody says i could have done it better than him at a cost much lesser than him and so the but until and unless especially the ukraine war has clearly brought out that in terms of security is concerned you cannot depend on any foreign country the territorial integrity and the sovereignty and the defense of the country rests with us and to us it's very important that we should not be blackmailed by any nation at any point of time whether it be on ammunition be it on spares be it on maintenance be it on upgradation and the import of the equipment and most important is like he rightly brought out we have the resources we have the brains we have all of it until unless indigenization is done until unless the private industry is also encouraged to join and they are an active participant in the need of the armed forces we will always be found wanting but today we find that both of them are the synergy is a very essential thing and that atman nirbhar will soon be seen and it has to be seen it's been a long drawn process of self reliance in every aspect you started off with we had shortage of food we had a green revolution we find all of it now and not only are we uh, self sufficient we are also exporting the the white revolution you find the milk shortage now you have no shortage of milk similarly for the first time we have started exporting in even armed forces in the military equipment been exported worth about 100 crores so this is a beginning until unless we make a beginning and we encourage the people around the startups have to be encouraged be it in drones the kind of startup that have come the kind of brain that we have in drones is adequate so i personally would say that atmanirbhar is absolutely essential because we must be self reliant at least in terms of security and the kind of new geopolitical a new yes. uh, narrative that just might be coming after the ukraine war i think it's very essential and we have no two ways about it and i'm no doubt all these committees all the defense procurements are basically to streamline and ensure that the armed forces are modernized in the manner that they want it to be done Absolutely. All right so as uh, general kulkarni is saying the private sector participation is very important let me take that to mr bhargav mr bhargav the contribution of private sector companies is more than 70000 crore in defense production the defense market is prone to major fluctuations it is subject to government policies which may vary as per the threat perceptions it requires massive investment and long gestation period as well what are the major constraints for private sector participation in defense and how do we remove those bottlenecks 
Good afternoon, Kriti. I think uh, this is a very important question. But before I come to your uh, uh, answer, I would just like to make two small observations on the previous speakers. Firstly, with regard to the defense acquisition policy, as was mentioned, it is there right from uh, 2002 onwards. But the last policy, which has been made from DPP, Defense Procurement Policy, to Defense Acquisition Policy 2020. And this minor shift has got a major implication. That means the entire policy is not for procurement. You do procurement for the vegetables and fruits, but defense is much more complex. And that's why instead of procurement, it is now being made acquisition policy, which is taking into account long-term perspective of the armed forces, as well as the requirement for the, for the country's security. So the, the changes that have been brought out about is with regard to life cycle support with regard to developing new technologies and most importantly uh, the second point that i want to bring about what general kulkarni mentioned is about the art nirbharta there are no runners-ups in war and therefore it is very important that our services get the best in class equipment and as we see the nature of warfare is undergoing a major change and it is becoming more and more technology intensive it is important that Indian armed forces are at par with the latest developed technologies. We have seen in the Armenian-Azerbaijan war, as well as in the ongoing Russian-Ukraine war, the importance of the technology. And that is what uh, I think the Prime Minister is also emphasizing that unless we develop the IP for the technology in-house, we keep buying equipment, we never get the know-why, we only get the know-how. And unless we get the know why, we will not be able to upgrade it to the next level of technology, which is very important in the case of defense. As far as uh, the procurement part is concerned and the industry readiness is concerned, uh, government has no business to be in business. And that is realized now by the government. And the DAP 2020 has given a major emphasis on the enhanced participation of the private sector. The, the private sector has come of age. In the 1940s and 1950s and early 60s, industry was not geared up to take up defense production. And they worked as partners to the DPSUs, the defense public sector, and the DRUs. But of late, the industry has come of age. Today, all the global technology giants are run by Indian expatriate. If they can run industries over there, the, the capability is the same. They can do the same over here. They have done it and shown it in the case of IT, ITES, and also they can do it in the case of defense. That realization has led to the government making major changes and bringing private sector to the front and creating uh, policies which are related to make one, make two, make three, strategic partnership model, uh, innovation for defense excellence, and technology development fund. These are the multiple initiatives, a plethora of initiatives that have been unleashed by the DAP 2020. And all along, uh, as was mentioned by General Kulkarni, there have been a number of policies. But the challenge that the industry has been facing is implementation of those policies on ground. And this is something which is uh, a major change that the industry is witnessing in the last couple of years. Last year itself, we saw that almost 64% was supposed to be procured from the private uh, from the domestic industries. The government has exceeded that and gone up to 65%. The target of procurement for 2022-23 is 68%. Right, so sir. we have uh, always been talking about that we are importing 70%. I think a major shift has happened by importing from the domestic industries, and that is led by the significant contribution of the private sector. And if there was a mention made about the export. I would like to quote the actual figure. We have moved up in the last five years from 5,000 crore to 22,000 crores of export. For Absolutely. the first time, India has figured in the CIPRI list at the number 23 among the top 25 exporting countries. And this has been possible not because of uh, the, the public sector, which has always been there for the last 70 years, but enhanced participation of the private sector out of this 22,000 crore, almost 80% is the contribution of the private sector. So private sector is playing a major role. And as long as we get the support in terms of order and the policies, uh, which are 
very very positive as seen in the last few years i am sure that we would become atmanirbhar in defense uh, production as well as technology development going forward by the year 2025 absolutely that's a very important point that you made could danishali as you we were talking about pushing exports pushing atmanirbhar bharat in defense sector a very important point there that there is no more import of extreme cold weather clothing do you think that's a very big achievement yeah it 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 should have been done earlier and uh, it's an achievement and not only the clothes there are a lot of things which there is no necessity of being imported we have uh, uh, as as a defense committee member i have seen lot of psus i visited lot of psus there there is a potential of not importing major equipment we can make here in india now at least we are going through that we are moving towards that and i hope that in coming years that we may be more self reliant and uh, um, as mr bhargav has all, uh, said that private uh, players are uh, contributing it no doubt about that but uh, we have to be cautious the government has to be cautious as i gave you an example that defense forces have lot of big assets they should not be given on a throw away prices my uh, uh, caution to that is like i gave you an example that military uh, workshops are there it has been discussed that some private player will come and take it over there, there is a lot of uh, opposition from the workers there they have came and represented to us yes let why not the equipments the um, uh, spare parts are not being provided in time to the present workshops they are being delayed and then the responsibility comes on the workshop that they are not uh, uh, giving the maintenance properly in time uh, when it goes to private player jadoo ki chadi to nahi hai ki wo aake ekdam theek kar dega to why can't we streamline the process right now to land ka value bhi jo hai wo uh, rakhna hai hame to privatization ke naam pe i am not opposed to privatization i am for that the private players should come contribute we must take help of them general kulkarni another important point i'd like to touch upon is the offset clause for the understanding of our viewers what is that clause and what is your stand on government stand on the offset clause recently you know the offset policy now in the 2020 it can be done away with also it has its pros and cons because offset uh, obviously allows indian industry to flourish because it allows uh, any importer uh, that uh, what, what you call as original equipment manufacturer he cannot possibly be able to manufacture unless and unless offsets are given now offsets meaning that complete equipment say about 30% now as high as 50% offsets earlier and now of course no offsets also it has its own as i said pros and cons offsets allow small scale industries medium scale industries to be able to absorb the technology so even if it is absorption of technology it allows employment to also be generated because you absorb the technology at the same time you also get to know about how the technology and how that weapon or an aircraft or however like for say rafael for instance now we get a complete uh, say backup for its maintenance in india so you have rafael now with indonesia you have rafael with uae you have rafael in india so you find if it complete uh, repair and maintenance of it is done in india it's a big boost that the indian industry gets the man, the maintenance of an aircraft the upgradation of the aircraft all of it that happens in india offsets at all times of time say for instance in an offset that not the whole of it say let's take the case of a missile the missile the heat the seeking the seeker is something which is the heart because without the seeker the missile won't go to the place so it just might be 10% of the entire missile cost but it is the it is the heart of the particular missile so uh, until unless that all those aspects are seen however 
I would say that offsets must be given with a view to be able to allow the Indian industry to absorb employment opportunities to be created. But also it has its own advantages and disadvantages because if offsets are given, it should not come in the way of procurement of in a particular item because you are buying in IDDM. That means you have indigenously designed, developed, manufactured, buy Indian, then again buy and make India, buy global, again in that two categories of it total import or otherwise. So government has tried to see that as just not procurement, the acquisition being made easier and at the same time modernization of the armed forces is not affected and we yes. get bang for our buck. Absolutely, sir. Another important point about modernization that is FDI in the defence sector. Mr. Bhargav, government has brought in significant reforms to promote FDI in the defence sector. So far, 45 FDI proposals or joint ventures have been approved in the defence sector. Through more liberalized FDI policy, do you think we are on the path of achieving a turnover of 1.75 lakh crore in defense manufacturing by 2025? FDI is a very important question, uh, Kriti, but uh, just give me time for answering to two, uh, making two points. One, what uh, Mr. Danishadi, member of the parliament, mentioned, there is already a successful model, which is called a GOCO model. GOCO, government owned, corporate operated. It is being used for many strategic programs very successfully. It's a concern of uh, the Honorable mm -hmm. Member of Parliament can be addressed if we follow that model. And as far as the offsets is concerned, General Kurkani very rightly brought it out. I would just like to add that offsets have been very successfully used for moving up the value chain by country like Israel, South Korea and South Africa. It's not that offset per se is bad. Offset is very good and countries have really used it for their benefit. We need to see that offset should be the technology that we need for our country should be mandated in the RFP so that all the foreign OEMs who are going to bid for it should do it at, uh, at par and we should get what we need not what uh, the foreign OEM wants to give under offset. And that is what has been the major problem on the offset side, which can be solved. As, as we go forward, out of the seven categories, six categories Indian companies can participate, five categories are reserved for Indian companies. So there are only two categories in which the foreign OEMs can become uh, either a major partner or the, uh, or the prime. And that is only where the offset would be there. So offset per se is a dying thing, but we have 8 billion worth of offset still outstanding. So it's an opportunity that should be leveraged. As far as FDI is concerned, uh, being in the, uh, I would just like to correct uh, Kriti. I am a Commodore Mukesh Bhargav. So I have served for 31 years in the Navy. So I can Point tell taken, you, sir. yeah, and I, I can tell you that FDI, and now that I have been 15 years in the corporate, I can tell you, industry is not looking for FDI. Industry can, industry is looking for orders from the government. And you give the orders, industry will invest and they don't need the FDI. FDI is good, but if you say that, if you look at the past, the amount of FDI, you, you mentioned about the 45 uh, proposal which have come, but what is the value that we have got? Under the FDI, Unless you have a joint venture where you are able to manufacture systems like what General Kulkarni mentioned about missiles with their seeker technology, which uh, a company like LNT has done with MBDA, but there are no orders. So what you need is not FDI. You need orders. Industry will invest. And companies like LNT, Tata, yes, Mahindra, they have, they have invested. And they're not waiting for an FDI to come to make an investment. They need orders. And I think that is where the focus should lie. Government and they have started doing the Raksha Mantri has promised 68% uh, would go to the uh, domestic industries and 25% of that 68% would be reserved for the private sector. Right, sir. If that, that 25 becomes 30, 35, you don't need FDIs. Absolutely, sir. That's a very important point. And with that, we know that self-reliance in defense equipment production and acquisition is being pursued as a key aim of defense procurement in India. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Ali. General Kulkarni and Mr. Bhargav. Next week, we'll return with incisive analysis of another committee report. Till then, take care and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Namaskar.